Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Today we are going to conduct 33rd tutorial and in this tutorial we will be learning about timer programming steps, right? Uh, we have been already discussing timer in since last two lectures. So in this lecture we will be actually uh, outline the steps that are required to uh, complete a basic program for timer, right? So let's start our topic. Okay, the very first step involved in timer programming is configuration of timer zero control register. We have already learned what is a timer zero control register and how it controls basic operation of timer zero. So very first step that we are going to learn uh, or very first step that we are going to perform in timer programming is to load the specific value according to the requirement of timer zero control register, right? You know that to load any value, we need to, uh, we need to put certain value inside timer zero control. So let's write basic command. So we know that it is composition of uh, basically uh, eight bits. So let's say we just define those eight bits and move those bits into working register. So binary very first bit at timer zero on and off bit, that should be zero because we are not starting our timer. Second bit is what? Second bit is selection of eight bit and 16 bit. Let's say we are going to use a 16 bit a timer. So timer, uh, the sixth bit is basically, uh, or the second most significant bit is what uh, selection of eight bit. So we are going to use it in 16 bit. So we will be actually putting zero over here. The third bit or third most significant bit is uh, we are going to use the clock uh, or we are going to determine the clock. Uh, we, whether we are going to use internal or external. Let's say we are using the internal clock or the clock which is uh, which will be shared with the XTEL provided to the PIC 18F microcontroller. So for internal clock, it will be zero. The most, uh, the fourth most bit will be uh, source edge and you know that we can actually program this timer zero for positive edge triggering or you can also trigger it for negative edge. So let's say for this, we are going to use for positive edge. So positive edge, it should be zero, right? The fifth bit is basically pre-scale assignment. We have already discussed that pre-scale assignment is used in certain specifications. If it is not defined, we will not be using it. And to disable it, we have to make it one, right? So rest of three bits are related with uh, Prescaler, since we are not using it and we have already disabled it, so we can actually put anything. Uh, either we can put triple one or we can actually put uh, triple zero, right? So these three bits doesn't matter because we have already disabled the prescaler assignment. So this is the value that we want to load into the timer zero control. So these are the bits, right? And then we will be loading uh, it into timer zero control. So move working file timer zero control register. So that's how you actually uh, load a value. So this is the very first step. Let's go to the second step. And second step is to load the value of timer zero H and timer zero L registers. We have already seen there are two important registers because they actually save the count of, of the timer zero. So lower byte will be stored in timer zero L register and higher byte will be stored in timer zero H register. So let's say we are going to use, or we are going to load these values, FF, right? I'm just taking dummy values, right? FF, and let's say it is going to be uh, FD, right? So these values we are going to load. And here you have to pay attention because this is very important point. I have written timer zero H earlier, and then I have written timer zero L. So this is also the order of putting these values into the register. We cannot load the timer zero L register first. We have to put timer zero H register first and then we will load. So very first register that we will be loading after timer zero control, that should be timer zero H. And after it, we will produce or we will put the timer zero L. This is something unique because we know that this is higher byte and this is lower byte. So we are not putting lower byte first, rather we are putting higher byte first into the timer zero H register and then we will be putting timer zero L register. 
why we are doing so this is very important question and we need to understand it for example we want to put this value right so the time value would be ff and fft right or timer value would be triple f d after these putting these value let's say we do not follow this procedure and we put this value first and we put this value next right so if you know that timer zero control register there is most significant bit which is known as timer zero on and off and we have disable it so basically this timer is right now not in counting mode or it is not on right so uh, we won't have any issue but if timer is on and we load this value fd and then we load this value ff what is going to happen uh, while this value is already loaded and we are loading this higher byte so meanwhile when this uh, loading procedure is in continuous this kind uh, this timer is on and this value can change for example it may become from fd to uh, the next value would be what fe right so you know that once the loading of this triple R, double f in timer zero as will be accomplished this value will be changed so our count will be starting or our delay will be starting from ff to uh, fft uh, sorry ffe right instead of f triple fd right so this is the uh, main reason we cannot put lower byte first but we have to put higher byte first and then we will put we will be loading uh, the lower byte so this is the main point that i wanted to discuss so uh what did we learn we have to load the very first value into timer 0h and then timer 0 i'll register so let's say we write the code for it so how we will be putting these values this is so simple move literal to working and what is the value we want to uh, we want to feed ff right then we will be saving it to move literal to sorry move working to file timer 0 h register then we will load the timer 0 lower value which is move literal to working fd and we will be loading it into move uh, working file timer 0 l so this is how we will load uh, and timer 0 h and timer 0 l registers so the third step would be clear the timer 0 if in interrupt control register in the last lecture we have already learned that there is interrupt control register and in that interrupt control register there is one important bit which is known as timer 0 if and what is the function of timer 0 if it will actually let us know that timer has expired we know that we are starting from this value triple f fd so next value would become what triple f uh, e right and the next value would be what triple f sorry four times f and then what will happen we will switch to the or it will reset right we will to switch to the initial value or it will reset so this reset thing is known as rollover rollover which is which we have already discussed in the last lecture and this is indicated using this timer zero if at this transition what is going to happen this flag will become one so initially it should be zero and that is what we are doing in this step so what we have to do we have to clear it so and how you can clear any say any specific bit of any file register so we will be using this command bcf bit clear file right and we will be writing interrupt control so this is the file register name and the bit corresponding bit that is tmr0 tmr0 if right so in this way we will be actually resetting or clearing timer 0 if register right so now we, uh, now we have done the three steps let's go to the fourth step and fourth step would be first step is basically to start the timer so it, it, we will start the timer and how you can actually start you know that there is a specific bit or the most significant bit of timer zero control register right or this most significant bit this is the turning on the timer or timer zero on and off right so how you will actually start the timer you will simply write bit set file you will be starting it so, so bit set file and what file register timer zero control comma uh, and the bit number bit number is timer uh, seventh bit or its name is timer zero on right so we will write this instruction and this timer will be started right so what will be the fifth step the fifth step would be 
to check if the timer is expired or not and how you will check it using the uh, putting a check on timer zero if right you know that whenever this timer will expire or when this rollover will happen this timer zero if register would become or sorry this timer zero if uh, bit of this register would become one and how you can check whether a specific bit of file register is one or not you have to make a test right and how you can check you will write an instruction bit test file skip if set so we will be checking it whether it is equal to one or not and what is that file register name file register name is interrupt control timer zero if right so we are creating a check right and we will be staying on this instruction unless it becomes high so we will stay on this instruction unless it becomes high so let's say we will write a label branch xyz and where is going to be xyz this is the point where we will put xyz right so what is going to happen we will stay on this instruction unless it becomes one you remember we started with this count right uh, triple f d it will be going through triple f e then it will become four times f and then it will become zero so one two and three so there will be three different states will be happening in timers right and then it will become it will become equal to uh, zero zero right uh, so this is the point at which this timer zero if which we have cleared in the steps right in the third step we make it zero right so it will become uh, equal to what equal to one because this timer has expired so uh, uh, we will check uh, we will uh, put a continuous check here unless it becomes high it will be we will be checking it or we will be keep checking it unless it becomes one right so what will be the next step now timer has expired timer has produced certain amount of delay so what should be the uh, the next step that we that one programmer should do so that step is basically to turn off the timer and how you can turn off you remember we started it using bsf timer zero control timer zero onward right so we actually put one in this specific bit and now we are going to write we, we are going to make it zero and how you can make it zero using bit clear file in timer zero control register and the bit is timer zero uh, on right so in this way is ti this timer would be stopped so this these are the basic six steps that you need to follow in every timer programming you know that this timer is producing certain amount of delay and how many stats uh, or how many outputs it will produce for us remember i told you we started it with double f f d sorry uh, triple f d and then we switch it to triple f e and four times f and zero so first start to switch and then second state to switch and the third state to switch so there are three different counts so basically let's say we were using crystal oscillator equal to uh, we have already learned about crystal oscillator in previous lectures in the basic delay lectures when we were using uh, nested loops to produce delays so 4 megahertz crystal if you are using so you can actually convert this 4 megahertz into uh, instruction time i hope you remember instruction time and instruction time could be uh, for 4 megahertz would be equal to what would be equal to 1 microsecond so if every state is consuming or every instruction is consuming one microsecond if you don't remember this i can put a uh, uh, i card for you you can actually go to this specific lecture or the tutorial and you can learn how you can translate a crystal oscillator value into uh, instruction time so you can actually follow these lecture to for revision purpose right so if crystal oscillator is four megahertz and instruction time is one microsecond so in every state we will consume how many seconds uh, one microsecond so you know that uh, very first uh, very first count from triple f d to triple f e it, there will be one microsecond then triple f e to triple uh, four times f it will be one more microsecond and then from from four times f to trip four times zero which is rollover so there will be three microsecond consumed so the total time which we, which is consumed in this timer or total delay uh, which is produced by this timer is three microsecond 
Uh, remember, this is just a dummy value we have used here. We haven't provided any calculation, but this is the, the to be exact amount of delay which is produced by uh, this timer zero when we are considering crystal oscillator equal to four megahertz. And remember these values. We are using this timer in eight bit, right? Sorry, in sixteen bit mode, and we are starting with this value. So, and we are uh, achieving how much delay? We are achieving three microsecond delay, right? So uh, generally, delay required is known, and we need to calculate these values. What values, which we actually assume here uh, to be known, but uh, uh, this procedure is normally happens in reverse order. Uh, we are given with uh, the delay that we want to produce, right? Uh, or we are given with the uh, crystal oscillator, right? And then we have to calculate these values. What values? The initial values of timer zero and timer zero L. And this is a complete procedure that we're gonna learn in next video. But in this video, we learned only the basic steps which are required to program a timer zero in PIC 18F microcontroller. Okay, that's it from this lecture. If you have any confusion or queries, please post in comment section. Thank you so much for listening.